She's extremely sad because she misses us terribly. She doesn't, but she goes to every party and celebrates and carries on because we're out of her hair. So, we good, we good to start then? Okay. We're going to do dressing change. Um, and we're going to do a sterile dressing change on a surgical wound. Is that the only type of dressing there is? Absolutely not. There are a ton of different ways to do dressing. But if you can do a sterile dressing, you should be able to do any kind of dressing. Okay? So we're going to talk about a couple different things. What we have um, are different wounds. So this would be an example of a surgical wound with um, sutures. Okay, they're not really on here, but you draw them on there. Then we have wounds that have staples and drains. Okay. <clears throat> Some of our, and you're gonna, we're going to have a drain in our surgical wounds that we're dressing, so we'll talk about that when we get there, but this would be into the wound, draining out anything, any drainage that collects in there so an abscess or a pocket doesn't form inside my wound. And then there are certainly open wounds, okay? The difference between what we're going to talk about today and an open wound is if I just, what we're going to do today is we're going to look, lay gauze over the surgical wound, but if I have somebody with an open wound and I just lay gauze over the top, what happens is the surfaces of this wound re-epithelialize and heal over and it will never fill in that gap. It will heal right over and my patient will have this big gap tissue loss forever and it'll become a big scar like that. So um, when you're dealing with and dressing patients that have wounds with tissue loss, you have to put something inside the, the space to, to fill it loosely. It has to be moist. There are a ton of different products and I'm not sure how much Ms. Shirey will talk about or you guys don't even Ms. Heacock will talk about it. You guys don't even Oh, she was so good. I don't know how much it is. Oh, God. I don't know how much Ms. Shirey will talk about that, but there are a lot of different products. If this wound had a, a copious amount of exudate, meaning a lot of drainage, you could actually put product in that would dry that turn into a gel to help absorb that. But basically, these tissues have to be kept moist so that they'll heal. You can't pack it tight. If I pack this wound tight, what happens? What happens if I pack it tight with dressing? Why doesn't it heal? What happens if I put a lot of pressure on something? Right, if I pack it tight, I put a lot of pressure on it and I've impeded the blood flow to those very delicate tissues and it won't heal. Okay, so we're not going to be doing this for our dressing change, but certainly you will see a lot of wounds like this. Um, and you'll certainly see a lot of different products that we use to treat wounds and to, and to dress wounds. So those are just a couple examples. <clears throat> in, your, in your lab bag, you don't need, you don't need it now. If you could just write, I'm going to tell you the things to write down to save. You have a lot of wound supplies, and I want you to package some up for checkoff. Okay? So what you'll need to package up is a pair of your sterile gloves. Remember, you have three packs of sterile gloves in separate packets. So pack up one of those for checkoff. You should have, and I'm not sure how many um, slit sponges or drain sponges you have in there but put one of those, one pack aside for checkoff. Okay, the others you can use for practice. So either a slit sponge or a drain sponge. Not sure, my packages may look different. We've got so many different types of packages, I'm not sure what yours look like or exactly how they're worded. And it was just like the one that you use for trach, so you should be able to see through the package the slit in it. And then I would say put, a, put aside four packages of four by fours. And put aside one abdominal pad or ADD pad. Or combi pad. I'm not sure how yours are labeled. But it should feel thicker. And then mine's folded in half. Yours may be more narrow, almost like the shape of the glove. If it's folded in thirds, sometimes there's, I'm not sure how yours is packaged. Um, you'll need your tape for checkoff. And the only thing that you'll need that you guys don't have is wound cleanser, and we'll have that at the bedside. Okay, so those are the things you'll need when you do checkoff and cleaning gloves.
Okay, so for addressing pain, as I said, we're going to do sterile procedure. It's going to be one of those procedures that is kind of half sterile, half not. Okay. So we're going to gather our supplies. And the first thing we have to do is take off our patient's dressing that they have. Yeah. Sure. I put the rail down out of my way. I know my bed is locked. I've done my standards of care. Um, introduced myself. Identified my patient. I know I have an order to do the dressing change and what type of dressing change, whether I need other kinds of any kind of medicated solution, so I know what supplies I need. I did forget today. Let's do that. Um, remember, you can't get a five leave them, I guess I'll get better ones. Um, <laughs> all right, so I've done all my standards of care, I've got my supplies, I've got my bed to where I need it, I've talked to my patient, explained everything, I've got my clean gloves on because I need to take off my patient's dressing. I want to tip the camera up so the room is higher so they can see that. So I can see my head. There you go. Okay, probably over there. Okay, so I have my patient's wound. Do I just rip the dressing off? No. I need to make sure I'm careful of my patient's skin integrity where the tape is. So I need to make sure I hold my patient's skin taut while I peel the tape off. And I also don't know, I know my patient has a drain. So if I take this dressing off quickly, what happens if I pull that drain out? What happens if I pull that drain out? Might hurt. Who do I then have to notify? The physician to put it in. What's he going to say to me? Hey, don't call me. Hey, don't call me all of me. And I have to do it, and I have to, I have to, I have to grow up and own it, right? Because I did it. So I have, I'm getting ready to take this off. What, what might be under my dressing? Drainage. So if it's been what? Oh. Smell. Absolutely. That's what I was looking for. If it's been sitting there for however long since it was last changed, last shift, couple hours, it could smell. What happens if I take it off this way? They're going to smell it first, okay? They're all, they also might be able to see it. They might not be ready for that or like that. So I'm going to lift it up this way so I can see what's on there. I can make sure I'm not pulling my drain out. Okay, see, I put a purple one on there so you can, you can hopefully see it better. It's a little thicker. There's my drain sponge from around my drain. Okay, so I've assessed my dressing for, if you look on your paper, read me, somebody read all those things that are listed there. So what a color? I'm sorry, what? Erythema or ecchymosis. Erythema is redness, ecchymosis, bruising. So I want to make sure I'm assessing the peri wound, the wound and peri wound. So what does peri wound mean? Around the wound. So I have to assess that. What's next on there? Approximated. Approximated means between these sutures, the edges of that wound. Hold on, I'm gonna. I need both hands. That means between those wound edges. Oh, sorry. Where am I? Between those wound edges, the edges are together and not gapped. Okay? Approximated, non-approximated. That there's a gap. That, that's what it means. When somebody says, is that wound approximated? Yes. Because 
the integer together. Or no, it's not approximated between sutures six and seven. So what do we have next on there? Granulation. What's granulation? Granulation tissue. Granulation is fresh tissue that a wound, wound bed produces as it's healing. So that's why right in the center of this wound, it looks a little red. It's not the peri-wound area. It's the granulation at that area um, of incision. My open wound, if you look in the open wound sometimes, you'll see that it's very um, kind of bubbly-like, that very beefy red bud. There you go. Thank you is granulation tissue. That's healthy healing tissue. It's also very fragile. Right? You have to be careful. So granulation tissue is a good thing. Um, edema is what? Swelling. Swelling. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assess my wound for that. I'm gonna look for drainage both from the wound and the drain and I'm also gonna look at the drainage that was on my dressing. Okay? So these are the words you need to know. Serous. What's serous drainage? Clear fluid, like inside a blister. So what usually, what makes up serous fluid? Platelets and white blood cells. Um, serous sanguinous, kind of a watery pink. So this is a mix of serous and sanguinous, which is blood, bloody drainage. And then there's purulent drainage, is what? Pussy infected drainage. So you have a whole host of colors that purulent drainage could be, you know, tan, brown, green, um, yellows. Okay, and then the amount of drainage. So usually when we're talking about dressings and wounds, we're talking scant amount of drainage, very little, to minimum, to moderate, to large amounts, to copious amounts. So once we've done that, we can dispose of our dressing in our gloves like we did with the other things we learned, okay? And we have that contained over in our trash can. All right, now I need to set up my sterile supplies. So, gloves, I think about how I'm gonna do this. I need to clean the wound, so I'm gonna use two packs of sponges to clean my wound. Then I'm going to put on my um, split sponge or my drain sponge. Then I have to cover that with a four by four because where this drain is, oh sorry, where the drain is, if I put the split gauze under that, drainage is coming out of the end of that. It's like a hollow tube. So I need to put a gauze on top of that to capture. Then I need a gauze to cover my wound. And then I need the ABD pad last. Okay? I'm trying to set up my table. I'll just say it's a different way than I usually do. So if I seem perplexed, it's because I'm trying to leave enough room to do my gloves on this table. Okay? I need my wound cleanser and my tape. Tape last. Wound cleanser is going to be first, but then I can put it out of the way. Um, I think I'm good. So I need to open my sterile packages. When we open them, there should be a split at the top. Can I just rip it? What happens if I rip it? It can fall out. But what am I missing that Miss Wheeler, when she did sterile technique, taught us about your one inch edge? If I rip this, the edge of this is right up against my gauze. Okay? Will you ever see nurses or healthcare professionals rip open a package? Yeah, I did it when I was putting on, putting it on him to before class because I didn't care whether it was sterile. You know, so if I'm using it, but it, you have to know that if you do that, it's not considered sterile. So I want to open this flap nice and wide. The packages in your kits are often the paper is very thin. So I would suggest getting a nice wide grip. I actually spread all four of my fingers along that whole edge and put the hole from my thumb down to open it so that the package doesn't rip in the middle. Just take your time. 
okay? You don't quite have a one inch border, but you have what was in the package. Now, if that gauze flips around, then it's not sterile. I want to make sure it's open, and I'm going to steer it out here so that flap is in the back so that it doesn't get in my way, okay? So I think I'm going to go ahead and open all the packages across the back, then the ones in the front, and I hopefully have set them up so I could use the ones in the front before reaching to the back. We'll see if I thought about this properly. You have to open them nice and slow so they don't flip. And I can go this way because these packages aren't open yet. But I couldn't go this way, right? The ABD pad, oops, it flipped out of its package, so I would have to get another one. Okay. ABD pad has a blue line running down it, and that's just like in a, a brief or a diaper, it's a moisture indicator. Now these packets, I have to have that flap towards me, because I can't have the flap going towards my open gauze, so I just have to be very careful. Think about what is going to not get in my way. So this first one, I think, I'm going to steer this way. Drain sponge, I think if I do this, I just have to make sure I don't run into this sticking out here to me. Now what happens to my sterile packages if my table is wet? They're not sterile anymore. And with sterile technique, they often say, if in doubt, throw it out. You're not sure if something has been contaminated, don't use it. Okay. So now I have my gloves. They're double packaged, so this inside package is sterile. I'm going to put this out of my way so it doesn't mess me up. And I think I'm going to put my tape just over here in the bed for now just to get it out of my way. I'm going to leave my spray right there. So I'm going to come over here. I can still see my sterile field. I'm still right here by my patient and put on my sterile gloves just like you guys did before. Make sure you have the cup end towards you. And I do what for the first glove? And I scoop the second. Okay, so now my, my gauze are sterile and my gloves are sterile. But I need to spray this wound cleanser, which is not sterile, right? And I need to clean the wound. So even if I wasn't spraying the wound, if I cleaned that wound, my hand would become contaminated. So what I'm going to do first to make my life easier is I'm going to separate in your gauze packages. It's always two gauze together. Usually, oftentimes, nurses will just consider them one. I'm going to separate that just a little bit in case I need more surface area to work with. And then I'm going to decide which hand is going to be my cleaning hand and which hand is going to be my sterile dressing hand because I need to save one hand to put the sterile dressings on. Okay? So I'm going to this is just what I do. I just duck up my hands to keep it out of trouble. Remember I told you I talk with them? So it's the only way I can keep it out of trouble. If I keep it with me, didn't see it, it's ducked up out of trouble. So I'm, this hand is going to be my contaminated. So I can spray my wound. I didn't, check, I didn't check what my nozzle was set at. So I've sprayed my wound. You need to have a nice fine mist spray. And then I'm going to use my gauze to clean my wound. Now it says on your paper, remember we talked about you have to clean from the, the least contaminated to the most contaminated. The least contaminated and the place I want to keep the cleanest is the wound site. So the first thing I'm going to do, see how I folded my gauze up? I folded my gauze up so I can flip it around to make sure I have enough surface area. I'm going to go straight down that wound, being very careful not to pick and pull at any of those sutures. 
I'm going to flip my gauze around a different direction. Now, I want to clean. Oftentimes, we like to do things head to toe, and we like to do distal to proximal. But what is the most contaminated thing here in this area? The drain. So I need to do the drain side and the drain site last. So I've done the wound. I'm going to do next to the wound. Whatever is going to be under that dressing on my, on my non-wound side or my non-drain side, okay? I can get a new gauze anytime I want. I have two packages available to clean with. So now I'm going to clean on the drain side, head to toe. Okay. I'm going to go, I think I can go one more. Flip it around. I'm going to do this side of the drain. And then, one more. then I'm going to go around the drain. Yes. Um, I do have a question. What's uh -huh. the point of keeping the gauze sterile? If you know how you spray it at the bottom with your right hand, wouldn't it become a clean hand as soon as you touch that bottle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it the same as if you were doing it right now? Right now, yeah. Because is my patient sterile? Yeah. Are they ever sterile? No, our skin is never sterile. Okay. But I want to reserve this hand sterile and those gauze sterile so that I'm not adding organisms to that dressing that's going to sit there for how a shift, a couple hours, whatever. Okay. Okay? okay. Yep. Good question. So I want to make sure I go around. My whole goal here is not to take things toward the wound. Okay? So if I do from if I do the top half of that drain around, flip it over, I can do the bottom half and I'm going away from that wound. So that's your whole goal with cleaning, is to take anything away from the wound. Okay? Now, I opened a second package and didn't use it. I've got my area clean. I have that second package if there was more drainage here that I needed to clean off. Okay? So now I'm ready to put the sterile dressing on. So I'm going to duck up my dirty, my dirty one. Now, even though my hand, my gloves are sterile and these dressings are sterile, I don't really need to touch on the patient side of that gauze. I can pinch it, pick it up, and never have touched the side that's going against my patient. So this is my split gauze, and I'm going to put it around the drain, which for these, because they don't stick up off the patient, is always very hard. I'm going to resist the urge to touch that drain. Best I can, I'm going to try and get it up there. Then I'm going to put a gauze over the drain because now the split gauze is to keep the, the drain up off my patient's skin and to keep the drainage up off their skin. But if I don't cover that with another gauze, it's just going to drain out into the bed. So I'm going to cover that split gauze or the drain with another gauze. Now I need to cover my incision. So I'm going to cover my patient's incision. So I'm going to use this extra I didn't use for cleaning. And then I need my, my ABD pad. We're going to say, if the patient wound didn't have much drainage, I could just leave it like that. We're going to say we have a little bit of drainage from this, and we're going to put an ABD pad on because it's thicker and more absorbent. So the ABD pads are folded. If I pinch, I pinch the top of it and it unfolded. If yours is folded in thirds, you want to try and get the side facing up that's the middle of that third, and if you pinch it, the other two legs should fall down. And I'm going to put that to cover my wound. Okay. Now it's covered, it's not sterile, and I can do my tape. <coughs> if this wound had a lot of drainage, I have a couple choices for tape. I could put an occlusive dressing, which means that I would overlap my tape and have the whole dressing covered in tape. We don't need to use that much tape for checkoff. Sometimes you'll only see, you know, three pieces of tape on top, middle, and bottom, um, enough to hold it on. So when I'm checking the tape, I want to make sure I have enough on my patient's skin. I'm going to hold it over like that so I know how long to tear it. Okay, I'm going to tear my tape. You see, I am doing tape with gloves because at some point you have to figure that out. I'm going to put the piece of tape on and overlap it onto their skin at the bottom. Why would I want it on their, their skin at the bottom? So it doesn't leak. If my patient stands up and the bottom is open and there's drainage under there, it's going to roll right out, right? The tape might help catch some. So 
So for our purposes, I'm just going to do three pieces of tape. Here's something I was taught in a nurse, as a nurse. I was taught, and you might see it, and I'm not saying that it's wrong or bad practice. Some people will window the dressing, meaning they'll go around all four sides. What I was taught, here, let me get the glass for you now. What I was taught is that if you put tape on the body vertically, meaning up and down, what happens? If I put a piece of tape this way, what happens when my patient stands up or moves? You put a pull on their skin. Same as if, I mean, if you imagine if I put a piece of tape down the back of my finger when my finger's straight, and I bend my finger, it's going to pull on my skin. Well, what, what do we call that? Traction, right? And that can actually lead to patients developing tape blisters. Oftentimes you'll see tape blisters in patients who have had hip surgery or hip replacement or knee surgery and knee replacement because they've got, they've got swelling or edema under there, which holds against, has traction against the tape and gets tape blisters. So with those, if you put all of your tape horizontal to the body, it's a little bit more comfortable, and it tends to pop off less. Okay? If you put it vertically and they put tension against it, the tape might pop off. So I always put my tape horizontal. I need to do what on that dressing? Date, time, and initial. So I have my pen over here. I'm going to date, time, and initial, preferably not on my patient because they might not want to feel like they're written on. I could even do it on my roll of tape before I take it off, right? I can just take the roll like this and write on it and put another piece on there so that my dressing is labeled, okay? Um, I've checked my patient. My patient's tolerated that well. I've answered questions if they add any, and then I have to document my findings. So I want to go back to that list that we talked about, whether there's erythema, the odor, the color, um, the types of drainage, and I want to document all those findings, how the wounds look, and what I found on that dressing. Any questions? Before. Yeah, because I wouldn't want my pen off. Yep, yep. So, if you hear that, the question was removing your gloves before. I thought about that when I picked it up, because I really don't want now to put that pen back in my pocket and take it with me, right? Um, if, does it have on there about culture that he took that off? If, uh -huh. if for some reason you either were ordered to do a wound culture, which really if we culture things, we're going to grow stuff, right? If we culture our intact skin, we're going to grow stuff. But if you're ordered for a wound culture from a wound, you need to make sure you clean the wound first, because we're not just culturing the drainage, we want to culture the wound bed, so you always clean the wound first, and go in the deepest, cleanest part of the wound bed, and get your culture, if that's ordered. If you had any medication ordered, you could put that on. The easiest way to put medication on a wound is often to put it on the gauze, and then put the gauze on, kind of, you know, if you've got a, a linear wound, you put your medication in a straight line, and line that up with the wound. Um, so if you have any medications, sometimes it's just easier to put it on the gauze and then put it on the wound. You can clean it again, because remember it's truly not sterile and it's, it's them and their organisms, but you don't know know how clean your hands are if that's what they've touched it with. Um, again, you have to assess your patient before you do it and make sure that they can cooperate. If you have somebody that you're not sure can cooperate with your with, with what you're doing, you ask somebody to come in even if they're just kind of, you know, distracting the patient or holding their hands. And some dressing changes in wound care is painful. Okay. Any other questions? Anything we need to tell them about dressing change and the mannequin? Don't leave the tape on forever. Okay. This is all. Don't write on them with your pen. 